a retaining wall is leaning at an angle of 70 degrees to the horizontal. So first of all, what is a retaining wall? It's a wall, we'll draw a wall here. It's leaning at 70 degrees to the horizontal. In other words, a retaining wall is often something where like there'd be dirt up here and they don't want the dirt to fall over so they build a wall but sometimes the dirt is heavy and gets pushed and that wall starts to lean. That's what's happened in this situation. It's leaned to be at 70 degrees. So five meters away from the wall, here's five meters away from the wall, a rigid support is to be placed and attached to the wall 2.5 meters from its base. So they draw they put a support here so it doesn't fall over, and this length is 2.5. So we draw our picture first of all, and then we can take our picture and say, hey, I made a triangle. I made a triangle where this is 70 degrees, this is 5, and this is 2.5. Is it a right angle triangle? No. Can't use Sokotoa, can't use h squared plus c squared equals c squared. Can I use the sine law? I have an angle, but do I know it's opposite side? No. So I have to use the cosine law. And if I'm finding this here, in the cosine law, remember that whatever is opposite each other, those go together. So in your formula, those would be where your C is on both sides. Which one is A squared plus B squared? Minus 2 times A times B does not matter. So we can solve for this. Take out our calculator and type this all in at once. square root that answer. And I get 4.764. And it asks me to round to the nearest tenth. So the nearest tenth would be 4.8. Are there units in this question? You need meters, so you need, need to make sure that. Always reread the questions. What should I round to? Is there units? Get yourself used to doing that check all the way through. Okay, so we found this. Next, it says, and the measure of the angle, so I'm going to switch colors here, between the support and, nope, not that one. Hmm. between the support and the wall. So we read it carefully to say which angle are we trying to find. And now that I found this x, now I could use the sine law to find that angle. Okay, so maybe I label that angle as theta, and I can set up my sine law. Sine theta over five, because those are opposites, they would go together would equal sine 70 over and again I would keep all of those decimal places so I don't round early. I could get sine theta by itself so on my calculator I can start typing this in. I can go 5 sine of 70. That's on the top. And on the bottom, I want to take all of those decimal places, and I can just go second answer 
to get those answers from before. And I get sine of theta is 0.986. According to our CAS rule, it's possible that this answer could be in quadrant one or quadrant two. Is this maybe the ambiguous case? We have to find out. So how do I find out? Well, first of all, I would find my reference angle by doing sine inverse of the positive value and it's already positive. So my reference angle, sine inverse of that answer, 80.45. So my possibilities for my answer are 80.45 and the other answer would be 180 minus my reference angle. 99.54. Yes. Four six when it's rounded. Thank you. Eighty point four. And here I just do this. So you're okay with the four five there because it was too close. You know what that's called? There's a there's rounding would round it up to a six. Do you know what it's called when you just take the number and stop? That's called truncating. You ever heard that word before? So you just cut it off, it's called truncating. Often on higher level exams, they accept both. As long as it's the three decimals are right, whether you round it correctly or you truncate it, you just accept it. But you're right, it should be an 846. What are we supposed to round to? The nearest degree. So now, looking at our triangle, okay? Looking at our triangle, we found this to be 4.8. Do both of them work? They actually both do, right? Because I could put in 80 and still be under 180. I could put in 100 and still be under 180. This is technically the ambiguous cosine law. When you get two answers that possibly work and you started with your cosine law, okay? Um, however, you would have to check, since we have all the sides, technically you'd have to check only the 80 or the 100 would actually work with the 2.5. And usually, the ambiguous case for the cosine law is not technically part of the curriculum. So they were looking for just the 80 degrees. They didn't expect us to go beyond and find the other one. The other thing that could have possibly been done that would get rid of the ambiguous case in this situation is that once I have this 4.8, can you see that I could have also solved for this 80 degrees using the cosine law? And if I would have done the cosine law for that 80 degrees, it would have only given me one answer. So, for today, it wasn't meant to be harder than it was supposed to be. So, you would have to check because you had more sides which one actually works and in this case only the 80 is going to work the 100 doesn't work but you could have also solved this by finding cos of theta by doing the a squared plus b squared minus c squared and if i did the cos theta formula opposite the theta is the 5 you would have 2.5 squared plus the 4.8 squared over 2 times 2.5 times 4.8. Just, I just want to put this into my calculator to show us that the 80 degrees would come out this way as well. So I'm going to go 
That's why fraction buttons, 2.5 squared plus, I wish I would have stored this number, so I'll steal it from there, squared minus 5 squared. Oh, I really wish I would have stored that number. 2 times 2.5 times 2.5. You really wish you would have stored that. I really wish I would have stored that. That's okay. We can just take some relaxing time, slowly hitting our delete button. Although some of you wished I would have failed one more time. You were, you were, you were enjoying that, weren't you? It would be like, funny. Okay. And so now this cos is positive. If cos theta is positive, it's in quadrant one or quadrant four. Well, it can't be in quadrant four. That will not work for a triangle. So it has to be the 80 degree one in quadrant one. And sure enough, if I go cos inverse of this answer, I get the 80 degree one. But if I use the sine law, it came up with the possibility of two. So, in that sense, the cosine law has an ambiguous case only if you then, after using cos, try to use your sine law. You might run into the ambiguous case. So in that sense, the cosine law is actually a little bit better. When I chose the sine law here, maybe I should have chosen the cosine law because it would have only given the one answer. And then I would have known this is the only possible answer that we could get. But it's kind of, I don't know. I like a little bit of controversy in the ambiguous cases, like a little interesting. All right, so qu circle question number six. And I'll give you about five minutes right now to work on that. 